G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed and today we're looking at uh, how to build this uh, platform canopy. Now this canopy here is about uh, 320 millimeters long and it's about 80 millimeters wide and it's specially built to suit this platform here because they're particularly narrow the platforms I've made and it was necessary to sort of fit the space that I'm using but that's just a detail. In other words you can make these things to fit the space that you've got. The platform canopy is all scratch built with the exception of this um, kiosk here which is a standard Pico uh, kiosk that you can pick up at your model shop. The kiosk has been sprayed green and then it's been decorated with various posters and everything which I'll talk about later on. The skylights in the roof are just um, slotted in to allow a bit of light through and actually show up quite effectively when the platform canopy is lit up at night. And you can see that when you get down to platform level you can see partially the um, skylights up there and uh, they do also show a bit of the internal um, structure of the roof. And so now we'll just go um, through a slideshow which will show approximately the method for building this. Right folks, the first thing we need to do is um, draw up the uh, roof trusses in our drawing program. Now these trusses are really a collection of um, rectangles put together. Uh, it's not terribly difficult but the important thing is to work out the size that you need accurately and uh, making allowances for the uh, side panels to go on the side of the canopies here. So you could add an extra 2 mil on each side here. So you've got to make allowance for that so you, you don't want your uh, trains rubbing on the uh, edge of the canopy uh, when they're passing through the station. So yes, we, don't, we need to draw up um, the obviously just one of these. Uh, for example that one and once you've got your drawing set um, just uh, copy and paste to produce all the others and don't be put off by the overlapping lines here because uh, these uh, trusses are intended to be painted as the project uh, moves on and uh, you can um, copy almost the same shape uh, of the roof trusses into the end panels these are end panels that were again created in the drawing program just a matter of creating the first one and then copy and paste uh, to produce the rest of them. Now the Valance, I downloaded this image off the internet and if you go do a search on the internet you'll probably find them and uh, what I've done is I've obviously downloaded this and then I've copied that and pasted it a few times to create uh, the width of a page here in my drawing program and uh, and then when I've got one complete um, Valance I then copy and paste as usual to produce a number of them and um, you can see the way that they're set up the way that they end is clean you finish on the end of a panel there so if you cut that out and then you that's not long enough you can add another panel to that one there you can add it on the end of it it's really quite a simple process they butt up quite well and of course uh, in the uh, canopy that I've done I've, I've got skylights in there so I needed to design the window frames and uh, the skylight um, cutouts in the roof uh, can be based on the size of these window frames obviously the cutouts will be slightly smaller than the outside edges of these window frames but it's the same old story create one window frame copy and paste to create uh, a number of copies so when we've got all our drawing done folks it's time to uh, take the plunge and start uh, cutting out well, we'll first of all uh, paste the uh, printed copies onto card I've used cereal box card here which is about one millimeter for the roof trusses and um, so you cut the uh, the uh, trusses out once the paper has been pasted on there now you'll notice in this truss here I've designed a gap here which is about two millimeters uh, that's for quite a stiff ridge board because these trusses are so thin they're rather flimsy 
but what I'm hoping to achieve here is that once it's all put together and there's cladding on the on the roof section it'll tie it all together and make it actually quite strong now this is just a test run to uh, work out how to assemble this and uh, this is the ridge board here now you can see this pattern on the back and it's actually grey box card now grey box card here in Australia is somewhere between uh, grey cardboard and MDF it's, it's like the in-between product so it's quite difficult to cut with a blade it's um, it's almost similar to trying to cut MDF with a blade I would say it's a bit softer than MDF uh, but it can be done but it takes several passes with the, the blade to uh, cut it um, and it, as I said earlier it's quite rigid so that's why I've used this particular product just in this section here so uh, I just wanted to prove that everything would line up properly and I've used these uh, blocks out of a child's um, mathematical learning uh, kit uh, to act as spaces uh, so that the trusses will stand upright and uh, while the uh, ridge board is being glued in place and I've got a quick clamp holding all this together that's the end of the quick clamp and that's the other end and that'll squeeze everything together and hold it while uh, it's being glued so as I say this board's just a test run to see how it works and uh, yes it looks pretty ordinary you've seen the paper side of the trusses before and this gives away the fact that uh, this is actually cereal box card here takes a bit of work to cut it out folks but I, I think the results uh, are good in the end so once all that was um, glued together you can see I've got the full length ridge board in there now and that's all gone off and set I needed to add the side panels that go on the end of the trusses here and therefore I needed a shorter length in the blocks so the ends of the trusses could be exposed and again we're using the same um, a quick clamp to compress everything and keep it in place uh, however I've got these uh, narrow strips cut to suit the ends of the trusses and uh, the whole thing is now being squared up and set up so that uh, I will be able to place some glue on them and raise them up and uh, clamp them and let them set overnight so this is just another picture of it being prepared and here you can see <clears throat> I've done the gluing and everything I've put a piece of wood on each side and I've weighed those pieces of wood down so it'll hold the uh, the side panels in place there and again I've, I've sat it on um, a table and I've got baking paper underneath the thing so if any glue gets through it won't actually stick to the paper but more importantly it won't stick to the table underneath and this is the finished structure now so it's it's starting to get its strength now even though it's only one millimeter cereal box card it's starting to get its strength so now it's time to add on the end panels so it's the same process as before the end panels are glued onto one millimeter card cereal box card and then they will be cut out and stuck on the ends of the roof structure as we've done here now you might be concerned that the roof panel doesn't go all the way to the bottom here as you can see on the right hand side here uh, we have valance that will fit under there and there will be a cover strip over the join of the two pieces to sort of disguise that now we've got the um, window lights or the skylights or whatever you want to call them the, the, the windows uh, it's the, the story with these is a little bit different um, I've got some uh, clear acetate or shirt box material if you want to call it that and what I do is I cut out these uh, individual frames and I stick one each side of the uh, acetate so that when you see the window from either side it's got a frame on it again it takes a bit of work folks and careful cutting out especially with the middle section there but uh, 
that's how it's done. And then I've cut out a rectangular card panel to match one side of the, the roof. And uh, I've lined up my um, window openings so that they fit in between the trusses and I've spaced them out evenly. And um, on top of the, uh, the flat card here, I've put narrow strips of card as well to indicate a metal roof. And the spacing was uh, worked out very carefully and I made sure that the, um, the strips lined up with the edges of the windows. So I suppose that's your starting point as long as you line up with the edges of the windows and then work in between the uh, spaces in between the windows to sort of make sure everything's even. Take some careful measuring and, and planning before you jump in and do it. Also we have a ridge cap here which is just one millimeter card again my favorite material and everything's been sprayed silver and eventually that will be dirtied up with rust color and all that sort of thing but this is a test run just to make sure that the idea works and obviously the the roof panel here is slightly longer than the um, the roof structure so you've got a, a slight awning overlapping and also it overlaps slightly on the edges because we've got to fit a valance up under here and the roof has to appear to overlap so that we can slide some guttering up under there as well and this is just testing again you can see that it's just a loose fit on there now this is a double sided roof I've got an inner panel as well and the inner panel has to match the outer panel as far as the window openings go so uh, each side has its own matching panel and they were sprayed a shade of green a darkish colour so that they will be the internal lining of the roof. Just checking now, making sure everything's going to fit. And with the two roof sections on, again it's careful checking. So once I was satisfied with that, I've fitted the windows in behind the outer panel glued them in place and then I've glued the inner panel up 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 behind that again so the windows are sandwiched between the inner and the outer panels and uh, so and the, all the sections were glued together so they've had to be left overnight all glued and weighed down to keep them flat you'll notice uh, just here this section here where I've left a gap for the uh, the ridge covering there the ridge piece and that will fit nicely in just and butt up to the uh, the strips on the roof there and this is how it looks and then I wanted lighting in the uh, building so these little light covers here are actually rubber grommets that you can get from your hardware store and this is actually half of a grommet uh, I've sliced off the other half to give me this uh, light cover and uh, they're a snug fit over a three millimetre LED and they're glued into place as well and uh, painted and it takes sometimes a few coats of paint to block out any light bleed that might come through them. Uh, the uh, legs on the LED are painted as well and they will act as though they were hangers or brackets for the lights if you like. Um, some leads can be soldered on at this stage and um, two of them are going on this Pico uh, kiosk which will act as a support for one end of the uh, uh, platform canopy so there'll be a light each side and uh, that one's fitted onto the roof glued onto the roof and the appropriate leads uh, go down through the building and will pass down through the bottom and into the uh, platform and then through the baseboard and they'll be wired up with the appropriate resistors and everything. This box on the top here is another LED which lights the inside of the kiosk and uh, there's a couple of wires coming out of that and that will they will match up with the uh, other wires and all pass through 
uh, in the one trail of wires through to the uh, under the baser board. That's a better view of it. I did a bit of research on the internet looking at um, news kiosks and uh, this colour seemed quite appropriate so I've gone with that and I've done the roof black. You can see I've got a bit of tape over the um, uh, leads on the LEDs here and that's glued down as well just to uh, keep the lights secure. Whoops, we jumped one there folks, sorry about that. Yeah, that's a better view of the top. Once you start painting everything black to sort of cover up all the bits and pieces, it all looks like it's supposed to be there. It's just um, part of the works, folks. And you can see how the, the, I've got the one light on each side. And of course now these lights have to be wired into the canopy before the roof goes on, so there's no second go at this folks. So um, I've used a hot glue gun to uh, glue them in place and I've used the hot glue also to um, uh, stick the wires down to a certain extent. I want, to, want them to uh, track along the top of the ridge board here if possible because there's a bit of a gap once you put the ridge cap on and they should flow and stay in there quite nicely. They should flow through there and stay in there quite nicely. So you can see I've got the lights spread evenly throughout the structure. And uh, it's a bit hit and miss, but uh, I've got a kiosk down this end, so I had to um, subtract that part from how much space I've got left for the uh, internal lights and carefully consider that before I stuck them in. You can see how they're all fitting in there. And the leads for those lights, I should have mentioned this before, but the leads for those lights actually come back to the kiosk and travel down with the other lights from the kiosk. I think I had that back to front in the last slide, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and at this stage as well, the um, roof trusses have been sprayed a cream colour. And uh, that's uh, to better reflect the uh, colouring of the whole structure. And I've got here some um, dowels that uh, I got from a, a craft shop, I think. And uh, I've cut a slot in those so that they slot up over the one millimeter roof truss. And they virtually stay in place without any glue, but they will be glued on later on. Now yeah, it's all test running here, folks. Just checking everything's gonna work again. Uh, you'll notice that the kiosk now has uh, newspapers and magazines and little signs and everything. Uh, the signs were made in my drawing program. I think I did a, a video some time back about making miniature signs. And all these newspapers, etc., you just do a search for the period that you're looking for. In my case, it was the 1960s, so I was looking for newspapers, um, headlines from the 1960s and I downloaded the images and resized them if necessary and the same applied to magazine covers etc so there's uh, a broad range of uh, topics there from the 1960s to suit the uh, particular newsstand also put um, the Great Chesterford Mail on there that's the local newspaper in Great Chesterford well it's not actually but I made that up so there you go Better look at the uh, newspapers and magazines there. They're all just glued on there. That's one end with the appropriate posters and things. I mean, it looks a bit rugged in the cruel close ups here, folks, but it actually looks quite good when it's all done. Plenty of pictures of that one. Yeah, so she's rocking and rolling and ready to go, folks. And then we've tested it under the, the roof structure there. And uh, my dowels are painted up at this stage, and I've put the uh, GWR brown at the bottom. I found a bit of plastic tube that slotted over the dowels quite nicely, so I've cut bits of that just to fit on the end to 
sort of dress it up a bit. Review from the top. It's just about ready to go out to the railway. And here you can see how you can get a view of the, the trusses and, uh, and a view f through the skylights uh, from this angle. But you'll also notice here that we don't have any uh, valance, valance on here yet or any guttering. So the building's not complete yet. So now it's time to put the valance on, and that was uh, simply put on with PVA. It's a right pain to cut out all the little triangle pieces. Uh, give yourself some time to do that, you know, and take a break every now and again. Just walk away from it. Uh, but yes, they're uh, they're glued on and held on with the miniature pegs there, and our um, canopy posts are in place. And this gives you a good view of the uh, internal lining there. How that colour comes up, I think it suits it okay. I don't know whether it's absolutely correct, but uh, it looks okay. You can see, yes, folks, that all these little pieces here were cut by hand, so they're not absolutely perfect. But um, yeah, it, it's very difficult to uh, get them all absolutely perfect, and it takes some time to cut them out. You also notice that. Um, the back of the card here on the other side can be seen and so that needs a coat of uh, cream paint as well to finish it off. Just more um, artistic pictures going on here. It's quite a nice view along the underneath the platform canopy there. So now it's time to uh, trial it on the uh, railway itself so that's just sitting there for the moment because we need to check the clearances for the trains you probably also notice that we've got some um, platform signs on here as well that says platform 4 and platform 3 on there again they were downloaded from the internet and um, they were uh, stuck on the card and then stuck on the building you may even notice the cover strip that I was talking about there which is not very clear in that photo Oh, here we are. You can see the cover strip here. So that hides the join and looks quite effective, I think. If you do research and check out various platform canopies, you'll see this sort of thing going on. So it's not entirely out of character, and a lot of these things are made to suit the particular location anyway. So all we need now is uh, some guttering to go on there. And that's how it's starting to look. So what I'll have to do is drill a hole through the uh, platform to pass the wires through and uh, then I'll have to carefully uh, line up how I glue the, um, the kiosk on and the, um, the centre posts. There's a better view of the uh, platform signs along with my finger up the top there. I didn't realise that was there before. Well there you go. So uh, my friend Gary suggested I get some C-section uh, plastic strip and uh, use that as guttering. So uh, as it comes, it's white. So that's been painted up to sort of give a rusty, dirty, yucky sort of effect on there. And that was just uh, stuck on with uh, super glue. And that's how it looks from the side. I've also taken, I, I had these people standing here before, but I've also taken the opportunity to put some little seats in there as well. Uh, people have got to sit down. And uh, here we're checking clearances before it's actually fitted into place. It's um, quite important to check both sides, especially the uh, other side folks, because um, Trains are coming in here, they're on a bit of a curve just as they hit the start of the, uh, the canopy here. So, you know, when, it, when a train's coming around a, a curve, you get the, the front end of it sort of swinging out a bit. So you've got to be careful, check all your rolling stock and make sure everything's clearing everything before you um, glue it down in, in place. But it's pretty tight here. I probably would have been better taking a, a millimetre or two off it, to be honest with you. So when I do another one, I'll probably uh, make it slightly thinner. Not that you'll actually notice, but um, yeah, 
I, I just got away with it here. And that's uh, how it's come up. You can see the uh, platform signs here. And of course with the lights in it, we need to check it at night as well. So um, yeah, that's what it looks like at night. Those lights might be a little bright. Although I think the camera does have a certain role to play in how this looks. Uh, it's uh, To the naked eye, it's, it's quite effective actually. And of course we talk about the cruel close-up again. So the uh, cruel close-up shows all the warts and everything. And you'll notice what I was talking about before, painting the inside of the uh, valance there to hide the cereal box. Uh, signage on there as well and that's what it looks like from a distance at night so that's it folks that's that's how it's done it takes a bit of time and effort and uh, you know you you need a, a certain fluency with your drawing uh, program but it's uh, not beyond the realms of possibility it's not terribly hard if you break it down into individual components and think well how am I going to do that so that's it Okay, I'll leave you with it. Cheers, Gormo.